Hi, Andrea. Hi. How are you? Fine, and you? <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Qué bueno verla. Igual. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Hi, Yeli. Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm fine, fine, thank you. Excellent. Very nice. Yes, I do. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm nice. Okay. <laughs> ¿Qué le pasó ayer, Elita? ¿Se le fue la Inter? No, teacher. My family was coming and me atrasaron. <laughs> okay. No me gusta que me escriban de noche, pero bueno. Por eso me salí. Ok. Sí, yo de repente dije que se me hizo Eli. <laughs> Ah, pero ahí aquí estoy ya con todos los poderes. Excelente, Lisa. <risa> Very good. Y André, ¿qué me le pasó ayer, André? No pude conectarme. Ay, André. <risa> Ay, no. But uh, the next week I'm going, I'm going to try to not uh, miss the classes. Miss the classes. <risa> yeah. All right. Okay, very good. Okay, so yesterday uh, for Andre and Elizabeth, Elizabeth estuvo un par parte de la clase y todo, pero igual. Uh, we were talking about why is important on training. Okay, and we were watching the, the rest of the videos, Andre, porque se acuerdan la vez anterior no pude presentarles todos, no les podía compartir todos, pero ayer sí. So we were talking okay. about uh, why investing on training uh, workforce is important. Okay, and then we were listening and we were discussing that, <coughs> excuse me, that um, the employee, they feel valued, okay? Because they feel that the company cares for, for them, all right? And they feel important, okay? So that's one of the, and if you feel good, if you feel important and if you feel valued, then like in automatic, you give more of yourself for the company, okay? Uh, another lady was saying that, yeah, okay, it's an obligation from the company, but it is also obligation from everybody, okay? Like, for example, if the company doesn't really offer you any kind of training, then you, you should try to look for a training. And it's the company's responsibility to support you, okay? Now, uh, with these points of view, Andre and Eli, uh, we came to the conclusion that everything sounds nice, okay? But the reality of El Salvador is different, okay? These videos that I presented to you, they are from the States, okay? And we know it's a different culture. We know it's a different set of mind, a different a different country, all right, like a developed country, all right, so uh, Oscar was saying, yeah, okay, sounds good and everything, but it's, this is not a reality, all right, in a reality, it's a little bit different, okay, so, and that is so true, because not, uh, not every company here in El Salvador gives you or offers training to you, okay, so that's what we were talking about yesterday with, with your classmates, Andre, and then at the very end of the class, well, half of the class, uh, I chose for you guys, I chose a type of training, which is on the job training. It is called the OJT training, okay? This on the job training, what it does is they train you uh, while you're working, all right? For example, this on the job training, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are new hire, Maybe you are already working in the company for so many years, but then they, they tell you, okay, so you're going to be having this on-the-job training. That means that you are going to be following Irene on her job position because maybe you want to change your job position because there's a new opening and then you have to follow Irene around. So Irene shows you all the processes, okay? So what usually happens, eh, Andre or and Eli, what usually happens is on the job training is a training that you receive within your days, within the working hours, and you're not going anywhere. You're staying in the office following your classmate, I mean, your coworkers, all right? Usually this coworker has a lot of experience, all right? They will guide you, they will explain to you. You're not only following them, 
but they he or she's telling you, okay, Andrea, so this is what this is how we do this, okay? And then they give you assessment, and then you can ask questions, all right? And the idea is on the job training is a it's cheaper because you're already in the job, all right, training. Uh, or getting trained and it's quicker because you are seeing how Jesenia, for example, teaches a class and Jesenia follows all the uh, procedures and all the standards of education that she needs to give. All right. So it's not like it. And then, of course, Jesenia has to be one of the best teachers. All right. Because it wouldn't be, I mean, it would be as if Andrea is a new teacher and she's following a teacher that is not good <laughs> you know because andrea is going to learn the bad things all right and we don't want to have bad teachers we want to have good teachers so the person that becomes your mentor they need to be experienced they need to be very good at what they do all right and they need to show you and share with you their responsibilities and everything okay so that is on the job training so uh, we were reading hi uh, dianita and irene and jose luis we were, I was, um, I shared some examples of uh, activities that certain professions do when they receive on the job training, all right? And then the activity at the end of the class was they had to choose one profession, all right? And they had to decide, okay. So for example, Diana, I think she was working with, Dianita, who were you working with yesterday? I was working with Moises. Hi. So Diana, uh, they decided to talk about police officers, all right? So uh, one of them was the experienced police officer and the other one was the new police officer, okay? So Diana and, um, and Moises decided the type of on-the-job training they would get from their peers, all right? So using a weapon, uh, what was the other one, Dianita, that you guys came up with? Okay. Um... In the, to investigate a crime, to make a, a detention mm -hmm. of a suspect, to, uh, to identify the offender uh, or the criminal, to conserve the crime scene. Okay. Uh, to shoot a gun if it's necessary. Uh, interview, interview the witnesses of a crime. Okay, very good. So Diana was, let's say, the experienced officer and she was taking uh, on the job training, teaching him uh, those things that she just mentioned, right? So that's what we did yesterday. Oh, Oscarito, you're at the work today. Aha, uh -huh, Oscar. <laughs> you're your office. Excellent. Thank you, Oscar, for joining us. Do, do you hear me? Do you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, thank you. Good night, everyone. Good Here we go. Yes, nice. Thank you for being in class with us. And Henrito also welcome. Okay, so that was that's what happened yesterday. And then Elizabeth, uh, that's what we did yesterday in class. All right, remember that mm -hmm. the idea, the idea is to expose you to different topics especially these topics that do relate to us because we all work, okay? And we know what training is and we should know the type of training and there are and everything. So with that in mind, today we're gonna be talking about tools to assess training, all right? And we're gonna talk about questionnaires, we're gonna be talking about uh, open-ended questions, all right? So I'm gonna show you those today, but we're gonna go step by step as we always do, all right? So that was pretty much what happened yesterday, and this is what's gonna happen today. All right, so uh, besides that, how's everybody else? Irene, how was your day? Tell us about your day. How was your day today, Irene? Good, good evening, everybody. My day is, uh, was beautiful. Excellent. <laughs> because because I, I have, I, I, I am with Liv. Okay. We live and um, my family is good. <laughs> Excellent, yes, of course. So I, I, I have health. Of course, that's very important nowadays to be healthy. <laughs> yes. All right, very good. Thank you, Irene. Thank you. Jesse, how was your day? It was your day all day today. And for me, the days uh, are very difficult 
Why? Because, uh, yes, because one family member is died today. Oh my goodness. And caused uh, COVID-19. And it's so difficult because you can see again your family and only you know the notice and can go to the, what, enterrarlo, never. Mm. You cannot go to only the you had the notice and, and then uh, only one people of the family can go to the Pantheon. Right. Um, that's so. Uh, My family died about 10 a.m. and mm. at 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. is... Uh, it was buried. It's, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Was that in San Miguel? It's so difficult. What? Was that in San Miguel? No, uh, he live in Chalatenango. Oh my goodness. And I, I can't go to Chalatenango because it's so far. Yeah. Well, San Miguel in the virus is so difficult. Yeah. That's moments. Right. I can't see my family only but pictures. I know, Jesse. I'm so sorry yes. to hear that, Jesse, okay? <laughs> we Thank send you me. a big hug, okay? Thank you, Miss. Thank you. And thank you for being in class. I know it's difficult, especially after something like this. All right. I really appreciate that, Jesse. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. Thank All you, right. Miss. God bless you, okay? You and your family. Thank you. Thank you. The same for you. Thank you. Dianita, how was your day? It was a, a good day. Thank you. I've been working and only for the afternoon, it was uh, um, seeing a client. Okay. And that's, it right. was a, a good day, and I was doing some exercise. <gasps> wow, Diana! Yeah. Way to go! Very nice. <laughs> All right, that's Thank good. You. So you keep healthy and active, right? That's nice. All right, very good. Jose Luis, how was your day today? Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, Jose. Okay, my, my day was uh, really good. Uh, only I was worried because I, I think that I couldn't be in class because oh. it had been raining all afternoon. And yes. now it starts to, to rain oh. again. <laughs> and that is probably because when it's raining, it's difficult. Yeah, the connection, connection. Yeah, the connection is, is but, poor. Yeah. All right. But yeah. in this moment, I your wire starts to rain. Yes, thank you, Jose Luis. I, I hope that no rain anymore. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, it, it was raining in my house all afternoon. I don't know in your houses, but here it's been raining cats yes. and dogs. All right, yeah. It's known. It's yes, known true. It rain. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yes, you're right. Okay, very good. Oscar, how was your day? Tell us about your busy day because you're at the office. Um, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Today, I have a, today is my working day. Yes, I can tell. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was good. Um, we have a, a little, little things to, I mean, few things to do. Okay. Few flies. Okay. Oh, and, really? And few tasks to do. So, I went to work from from 4 to 5 p.m. I went to, I took a walk. Okay, all because right. Because it's too, it's too long to stay here. I mean, sitting or, or standing up. Right. I prefer to move. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. And where yeah. is your mask, Oscar? You're at the office, wear it. Um, I'm alone actually. I just <laughs> okay. need one coworker and it's okay. It's okay for now, for okay. now. You're right. When when if there's any operation, yeah, uh, from now to to ten, I will yeah. I will have to wear a mask. Yeah, of course, uh -huh. Oscarito. So but for now, it's, it's, <laughs> it's okay. Good and, and, and it's uh, also how to say this. I saw rain uh, near to Zacatecoluca and oh, cool. near to what is this place? To all along the 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 calle to Zacatecoluca. Oh, really? It was raining the whole afternoon, but it didn't rain here in the airport. 
you know, it's, you sh we should talk to you about the weather forecast <laughs> because you can see all San Salvador from the tower. Uh -huh. We receive a training on, on weather, just for, uh -huh. for just reading, reading cool. and interpreting the, I don't know how to... Like analyzing it? Analyze, uh -huh. oh, how to cool. read a, a the clouds. forecast. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, nice. How to read that. a forecast. Nice, but that's I'm so a, interesting. But not a... I'm not a meteorologist, just, right, I, no. <laughs> I just know how to read it. Uh -huh. Right, okay. But yeah, but you know what? That's something that not everybody knows. So that's your special skill. That's your, that's your training. Okay. Because I just see the cloud and I think, okay, maybe it will rain, but <laughs> I mean. Uh -huh. right. But it's, it's a step by step. By right, step. cool. Uh -huh. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Hi, Moises. Yeah. Hi, Moises. Hi teacher, good evening, good evening everyone. It says, how was your day today? Uh, great, because Hi. my wife, is, she was celebrating his, her, real, his, oh, her, her birthday. birthday. Oh, that's birthday. nice. Cool, yes. all right, okay. So you ate cake today. Yes, a lot <laughs> of cake. <laughs> that's nice, very good. That's so delicious, very good. Nice to have you in class, Moises. Thank you for being here. And Henrito, how was your day today? My day is a little because I like raining in here in San Salvador all day and it was raining. Yes, that's but, what, yeah. Uh, uh, but the problem here is this in this hour. The yeah. <laughs> the yeah, I understand. But you're here, all right? So that's important, Henrito. Yes. Thank you for being here. All right, guys. So today, as I was mentioning at the very beginning, uh, we're going to be talking about some tools that we can use to um, make some assessment on trainings. All right. At the end of the class, I will send you, not at the end, but like halfway the class, let's say it better. Uh, you, with your peers, you guys are going to be trying to come up with or making an assessment tool. All right, based on a training, okay? So, but of course we need to see some other things before so you're able to do that at the end of your class, okay? So right now I'm gonna get, I'm actually gonna show you the manual, the book. So in case you have it, please get it with you. If not, don't worry about it because I'm gonna be uh, sharing it with you right now. Hi, uh, Gerardo, welcome. Hi teacher, good evening. Uh, good evening, how are you today? Fine, teacher. Fine. Excellent. All right. Very good. Okay, guys. So I'm going to show you this. Hold on. These right here. All right. So we're going to be talking about. Give me a second here. We're going to be talking about this that I'm going to show you in a second. Okay. This is on your book on page 16. Okay. It says building vocabulary. This is this vocabulary is important for you to know because it's um it it relates to training and everything that we have been studying all right so number one is, is the triangle state strategy then it says the benchmark analysis then you have pre and post assessment and the last one is return on investment or roi or roi all right those are like the signals that we have roi or we say roi okay now, when we talk about the triangle strategy, when we talk about pre and post assessment, benchmark uh, analysis and return on investment, they all relate to training. They all relate to the investment you do. They all relate to the assessment that you can do before and after training. So of course, these all definitions, they do relate to what we're studying, all right? So um, do me a favor, if you have a notebook next to you or if you have your book, it's okay. Can you just copy the definitions right now? I mean, copy the, the vocabulary words, the triangle strategy, copy it somewhere. If you have a notebook or a, a, a tablet or your computer or a pen or on your cell phone or take a picture like Oscarito is doing. It's okay. As long as you have it. All right. That's, that's fast. Oscar, you're right. Yeah. All right. So either you take a picture or you copy it down somewhere. All right. So you have three, you have four vocabulary words. You have a triangle strategy. Watch the pronunciation with a strategy, all right? Okay, and it's not a strategy or a strategy menos, all right, strategy. Then we have pre and post assessment, and then we have benchmark analysis. 
<coughs> excuse me. And then we have return on investment, ROI. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop sharing right now. Now, guys, have you ever listened or have you, hi, Berito. Have you ever heard one of these four words that I just presented to you or you have never like heard them before? Someone that can tell me, have you seen any of those? Never, some, uh-huh. I hear the benchmarking. Okay, but the it's, benchmarking it's analysis. Not, it's not clear, uh, my okay. analysis is still, it's not clear for me. Okay, very what good. It's about that. Maybe it's something comparing to, to ah, the competence. Okay, but sure. We'll see. we'll see. Yes, of course. Very good. Thank you, Oscar. What about the rest of you guys? Were you able to see all of them? And like, have you ever heard those um, vocabulary words? Yes. Yeah, yes, listen. Ah, uh, which one? It was listen about. Um, uh, uh, one month, one month ago, I listened uh -huh. about. Okay, this. one of which, which, uh, which definition did you listen to? Is something like that, uh, business school. Okay. Something. All right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. What about Andre or Verito, Jesse, Diana, and all the rest of you guys? Have you ever listened to one of those words before or not really? In my case, branch more analysis, I don't have idea. Okay. <laughs> but but uh, another three, I have some idea because okay. the pre and the post assessment, yeah, I making that in my job. That's right, yeah, all okay. the time, all yes. the time, yes. And the uh -huh. return on uh, invest investment, I make it in some time. They ah, do okay, okay. The triangle strategy is is two. I may make uh, nor frequently, but uh, but I make two. Oh, Only interesting. That Mark, I don't know. Okay, that's okay. I don't have idea. Excellent, Jesse. Thank you so much. What about Verito? Were you? Did you want to say something, Verito? I only hear about the benchmark. Ah. Only that. And and what you, what have you heard about it, Vero? Uh, nothing mm. specific. I okay. only the 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 term. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. What about the rest of you guys? Andre, Diana, Moisés, Irene, Henry. Gerardo, have, uh, listening about benchmark, but benchmarking, I don't know if it's the same, Okay. but it's an analysis that uh, the company do, well, the, the, the marketing department do uh, about the competence mm -hmm. in some uh, elements. Okay. And they compare and uh, they do, they try to, to do better than the competence okay all right interesting thank you andre oh very good what about the rest of you guys i have only heard about benchmark analysis too okay and i think that um, about return on investment but i think that is a financial mm -hmm. uh, definition I think. right okay very good okay very good okay so I'm going to share to you like the definitions that I found. Just let me get it a little bit uh, bigger here so you guys can see it better. Hold on. All right. Just give me a second. It wasn't that big. I'm sorry, guys. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna show to you first, what is the first definition about the triangle strategy, which I actually found interesting. All right, it says the triangle study, tri the triangle strategy. Who wants to read this for me? Someone to read it? Me teacher. Thank you. The triangle stri stri strategy. A strategy. Yes. A start with um, wait. A start with four K elements that lead to higher performance and improve result. 
These are goals, leader, performers, and tax. The book clarif clarifies, each, clarifies each of these elements and offer example of how the elements interact in various applications. All right, so that, thank you. So the triangle strategy, it's called triangle because you talk about like things, all right? Like many things, all right? So it says there are four key elements that lead to higher performance and improve results. The purpose of the triangle strategy is to improve the results and the performance, all right? To higher up the performance. How? By, by achieving or getting to the goals, <coughs> the leaders, performers and tasks okay when you say task is the job is the hands-on activity all right so i want to i want to show you this here um i like to share videos with you guys so you practice your listening skill especially because yesterday most of you that were on the support session they were asking me teacher how can i improve my speaking how can i improve my listening by listening all right so that's why i want to do this listening all right so i'm gonna share the computer sound and listen to the triangle strategy okay you just mentioned about the triangle strategy can you explain or describe your entire framework in two to five minutes for our audience uh, yes i believe i can uh, to do that though i'm going to ask maybe the viewers and you and i will do it also to actually draw the triangle it, it takes it out of just concepts going into the air but makes it concrete mm -hmm. what i'm going to do as i fill in when we fill in the triangle is identify the key elements that are operating in an organization in any organization we're going to create a universal model here so the center of the triangle is our goals all actions and organizations need to be or should be energized out of specific goals we shouldn't be doing any work in an organization unless there's a goal attached the top the point of the triangle we label leaders now leaders are not a position on an organization chart leaders are anybody who delegates work to somebody else that's my frame of leaders um, and it's a, it's a leadership sort of position and i can talk more about that later what that means and what leaders do is take the take the goals and they have to put them into action and they put them into action by delegating to the performers and that's your lower right hand point of the triangle the performers performers then have to go to work and they they do their work and i've the work is in the triangle is labeled as tasks which is the third point of the triangle so that's sort of the high level view of the model of of the triangle framework and as I said, this, is, this goes on in every organization. I don't care if you're a green market or a restaurant or a corporate, corporate office. You have goals that people are working towards. There are leaders that are delegating work to performers and performers doing the tasks. So if we understand that, we can understand that these are the elements that we need to pay attention to. Do you guys want to listen to it again? Yeah, all right, let's listen to it again. Just please. So, yes, Just please. of course, yes. You just mentioned about the triangle strategy. Can you explain or describe your entire framework in two to five minutes for our audience? Uh, yes, I believe I can. Uh, to do that, though, I'm going to ask maybe the viewers and you, and I will do it also, to actually draw the triangle. It, it takes it out of just concepts going into the air, but makes it concrete. What I'm going to do as I fill in, when we fill in the triangle, is identify the key elements that are operating in an organization, in any organization. We're going to create a universal model here. So the center of the triangle are goals. All actions and organizations need to be, or should be, energized out of specific goals. We shouldn't be doing any work in an organization unless there's a goal attached. The top the point of the triangle, we label leaders. Now, leaders are not a position on an organization chart. Leaders are anybody who delegates work to somebody else. That's my frame of leaders. Um, and it's a, it's a leadership sort of position. And I can talk more about that later, what that means. And what leaders do is take the, take the goals, and they have to 
put them into action, and they put them into action by delegating to the performers, and that's your lower right hand point of the triangle, the performers. Performers then have to go to work, and they, they do their work, and I've, their work is in the triangle is labeled as tasks, which is the third point of the triangle. So that's sort of the high level view of the model of, of the triangle framework. And as I said, this, is, this goes on in every organization. I don't care if you're a green market or a restaurant or a corporate, corporate office. You have goals that people are working towards. There are leaders that are delegating work to performers and performers doing the tasks. So if we understand that, we can understand that these are the elements that we need to pay attention to. All right, so we listened to the, um, the triangle strategy. All right, and he, hi, Silvita. Hi, Eric Diaz, welcome. Who else is with us that just got in? Yes. Oh, very nice. Hi, hi. hi. Hi, all right, so the triangle strategy, all right, and he makes, everybody makes a triangle, all right? So what goes in the middle? Let's see if you guys remember, what goes in the center of the triangle? What goes the in goals. the middle? The goals, right? The goals. He made the he made the triangle, and inside the triangle, he drew. I mean, he wrote the word. What about on the top of the triangle, guys? What did he write? Leader. Leader. Leaders. 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 All right. Leaders. At the top of the triangle, he wrote leaders. All right. Now, on the right hand side of the triangle, what did he write? Performer. Performers. Thank you, Moises. Performers. And uh, on the other uh, corner, what did he write? Tasks. Tasks. Thank you, Irene. Okay. So in the middle of the triangle, he had goals. All right. At the top of it, he had leaders. Then on the right hand side of the uh, triangle, he had uh, performers. And on the other side of the triangle, he had tasks. All right. Now, can someone explain to me what is the relationship between goals, leaders, performers, and tasks in your own words? Because I can listen to the video, I can understand it, but I want you guys to tell me what is the relationship between all those four things. I think that it will be that uh, when, when we set our goals, mm -hmm. we have to to have like, like an example to follow, example to follow, and this could be the leaders. Okay. And uh, we have to evaluate our performance, and but but before we are we have to set tasks to oh, okay. to to, um, to um, reach our goals. All right. Okay. Very good, Andrea. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? What is the relationship? between the goals, the leaders, the performers, and the tasks? Me, teacher. Yes, Jesse. And goals is the thing that you, you want to, I don't know, alcanzar. Achieve? To get? Yes. The, yes, the goals are the, the thing that you have to achieve. And uh, another uh, is the improvement that results that you have to, I don't know, that you have to know can be. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's more for performance. And the tasks, that's so, such activities that you can make for obtain different outcomes okay in your work that's all okay very good thank you anybody else teacher yes irene the, the leaders uh, are the people delegate in the organization i listen this yes. uh, but performance is to is do the work yes the workers uh-huh the workers uh, I take notes about this, only that. Okay, very good. Thank you, Irene. Very nice. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? About the relationship between... Yes, Henrito. Uh, all the organizations have uh, goals. 
but the leader is the to believe the this goal. But for the this goal, just the performances. Mm-hmm. And you say, well, when you say the performance, the AI will okay. certainly pass okay. for the for the the goal. Excellent, Henry. Very good. Nice. I like that. Thank you. All right, one last one. Either Oscar, Gerardo, Moises, Diana, Silvita. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. I think I think that have good relation because uh, when you have a good leaders, you mm-hmm. can make good goals, mm-hmm. and therefore you can have a best performance and is obtain good outcomes. Okay. All but right. when you don't have a good leaders, um, throw is go for the, I don't know, for the full can be. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Very good. Hi, Normita. Yeah. Welcome to class, Norma. Thank you, teacher. Very nice to have you in class, Normita. Okay, Oscar, you were going to say something? Oh, just to, to say that the, <clears throat> the triangle, mm-hmm. uh, I understood that the top was the, was the leaders. Mm-hmm. And then in one side are the performers. Yeah, the other side are the, the tasks. That's right. Yes. Uh-huh. And the goal is just in the in the middle, That's in right. the center. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you, Oscar. All right, guys. So what he, this guy was saying, which he's actually the author of this um, triangle strategy. All right. What he was saying is for every company, for any company, doesn't matter what kind of company you are. You can be a flower shop, a school Uh, a a factory, a restaurant, doesn't matter the type of your company, all right? This triangle strategy should help you, all right, to get better at the end, all right? Now, he was saying that for every company, every company has goals, all right? Has objectives, all right? Every company. If a company doesn't have a goal, it's going to succeed, All right, a company has to have a goal, all right? Mm-hmm. Then he was saying that's in the center of the triangle. If, we, if this is the triangle, the goals are right here, all right? Imagine the goals are here. At the top of the triangle, then you have the leaders. When he was mentioning or referring to leaders, he's not only saying managers or supervisors. He's saying any, any kind of people that can lead someone else, all right? But maybe that are the, like the, the best employees could be or the best uh, workers of the company, not only or not necessarily you have to be a manager, not necessarily you have to be the boss, not necessarily you have to be the supervisor, because we all know that sometimes leaders, I mean, managers, supervisors, maybe they are not as good as they should be. All right. So just because you're a manager, just because you're a leader doesn't necessarily mean you are the best. All right. So that's why he was saying leaders can be anybody someone that is to lead someone else. All right. And we know, and I think by experience, sometimes we have met people that they are very good leaders, that they are not managers or supervisors or the owner even, but they, they know the company really well. They know all the uh, protocols. They know all the structure of the company. So they're able to guide you or lead you. All right. To something. So you have the leaders at the top of your pyramid or at the top of your triangle. And then you have the performers, all right? The performers are the workers. It's everybody else, all right? Now, if you have a good leader, you have good workers. If you have good leaders, you have good performers. And if you have good leaders, you have good performers. These these performers, they make good tasks to achieve the goals that are on the center. All right, that's why it's a pyramid. That's why it's a triangle, all right? So yeah, first, first, any company to have goals, all right? Then any company should have a leader, managers, supervisors, of course, but also other type of leaders, maybe like we here, for example, in this classroom, in this virtual classroom, we may have a leader, 
all right? That person is not the teacher in this case, but can be someone else, all right, that is leading the rest of you, all right? So it's very important for managers and for supervisors to always be looking for the good ones, all right? The ones that can help you too, because as a manager, you get tired. As a, a supervisor, you get tired. You need to delegate sometimes, okay? In good hands, of course, okay? So if you have good leaders, then the good leaders will lead you correctly to the workers, to the employees, all right? So if, that, if there's a connection between the leaders and the performers or the leaders and the workers, then the performers and the workers are going to make tasks efficiently, better, happier, all right? And then what is the result? To achieve the goals. You see the connection, guys, on the triangle strategy? There is an, a very good connection on that triangle. And I, you know what I liked about this video is because the guy says this triangle is universal. It's for everybody. It's for any, <coughs> excuse me, for any company, all right? Maybe you have a school. Maybe you have a factory. Maybe you have a restaurant. Maybe you have a clinic. Maybe you have a daycare. I don't care. It doesn't matter. You have this triangle that if you are smart enough, if you're wise enough, it makes sense, all right? It should make sense to you. So that is the triangle strategy, okay? Do you have any questions or any comments about that, guys? About the triangle strategy? No? You, you understand it okay? Now, do you think it works? If you apply it properly, do you think it works or do you think it doesn't work? Let's tropicalize it like Oscar said yesterday. Let's think about El Salvador. Do you think this triangle can work? It depends, teacher. Uh -huh. Okay. Because uh, if you don't have uh, a clear idea of how to, how to uh, for example, to pass through leaders, Mm -hmm. uh, to performers, mm -hmm. uh, if you know how, uh, if you don't have clear the way mm -hmm. to to pass the the activities in order to achieve the goals, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't, it will, it won't work. Okay, all right, mm -hmm. yeah, I see your point. Yes, of course. All right, so that's why you have to be very careful, right? Because it's not just anybody. All right. Any other comments? Hi, Ellie. Hi, Nubia. Uh -huh. Any other comments? Hi, teacher. Well, the office. All right, very good. Okay, so I, I do want... Yes, yes. I, I write it. <laughs> I know. All right, very good. So uh, I wanted to show you that because it is in your book, okay? So for the one, for Normita and, El, and Eli and Nubia that just got in the class, I was, oh, we, and Eric also, we're talking about uh, some vocabulary words that are on your book or your manual, all right? So this is, I'm gonna show it to you right now. Uh, whoops, no, that's not right. This is the one that we're working on right now, okay? For Normita and all the rest of your classmates, uh, it's page 16 in case you have it. So we were talking, Normita and everybody else, about the triangle strategy, all right? So we read the definition and I showed the video about what it is about. A benchmark analysis, all right? So I'm going to present to you a very brief definition. What is benchmark analysis, all right? And here we have, oops, again, I'm not sharing it with you guys. Hold on, benchmark here. So we have a, the benchmark analysis is right here. Benchmark analysis. Uh, who wants to read this one for me? Me, teacher. Yes, thank you. Benchmark analysis is a form of market research used by businesses who wish to compare their existing performance to the best practices in the industry. All right. So that's what it means when we talk about benchmark analysis, all right? is a form of market research, all right, used by businesses, any type of business, who wish to compare their existing performance to the best practices in the industry, all right? Remember that you are not the only type of business that there is. There are many of restaurants, all right? There are many schools, private schools. There are many flower shops, 
there are many funeral homes, all right? So in, in, in this way, you need to see, like, the, you make a research, a market research uh, used by businesses who wish to compare their existing performance, how they are making, how they are performing right now to the best practices in the industry, all right? Because you belong to an industry, all right? So you want to see how your performance is doing with uh, the best practices in the industry that you belong to. Okay, so that is benchmark analysis, all right? And then uh, let me see here, I have uh, the ROI, which is a, the return on investment. For this one, I'm gonna show you the video, a short video again, so you pay attention to it. What does ROI mean? All right, so we can study it, okay? So I'm just gonna, this here, hold on. It's, okay. I'm going to share, yeah. ROI at the most basic level is straightforward, right? I mean, how much did you buy an asset for? How much did you sell it for? What's the difference? Divide it over the original and you've got, you've got some return. Well, that sounds basic, but there's lots of considerations. Transaction cost. Did you pay to buy or sell? And if you did, that could have a meaningful impact on that return. And clients don't think about that enough. Taxes. Again, uh, if you paid a 20% capital gains tax or more, um, that could have a meaningful impact on that return. Time. You know, if you earn 50% over five years, that's, that's great, but that's a compounded rate of somewhere in the eight, eight and a half range. Um, inflation, people forget about, or, or, you know, excess return over inflation, or real returns versus nominal returns. And then the last thing that people don't think a lot about is the opportunity cost. What would you have done with the money had you not made this investment? And, and really the return is the delta between A versus B. So I think at the end of the day, ROI sounds easy. I bought it for X, I sold it for Y. Did I make money or not? But when you get into the, the three T's of transaction cost, time, and taxes, and you also consider opportunity costs and inflation, it can get pretty complex. And I think that's why lots of people think they can, they can invest on their own. And we love people who want to invest on their own. But I think many of us, myself included, realize that at times it's good to have a partner who can help you understand those real costs and, and also help drive those real costs down. I'm going to play it again so you listen again this guy speaks really fast all right <laughs> so just for you to like yeah. um listen to him again yeah. he's talking about the roi all right roi at the most basic level is straightforward right let's read what it says our return on investment roi measures the amount of return on an investment relative to the investment's cost to calculate ROI, the return of an investment is divided by its cost. The result it expresses is as a percentage or ratio. All right, so that's what it means. This is what the definition of return on investment, okay? And then he says, yeah, okay, fine. Some people say, okay, I bought it for this amount of money and I sold it for this other amount of money. But did you take into account taxes, time, and the other thing that he was talking about, inflation and everything, all right? So let's, let's keep on listening. I mean, how much did you buy an asset for? How much did you sell it for? What's the difference? Divide it over the original and you've got, you've got some return. Well, that sounds basic, but there's lots of considerations. Transaction cost. Did you pay to buy or sell? And if you did, that could have a meaningful impact on that return. And clients don't think about that enough. Taxes. Again, uh, if you paid a 20% capital gains tax or more, um, that can have a meaningful impact on that return. Time, you know, if you earn 50% over five years, that's, that's great, but that's a compounded rate of somewhere in the eight, eight and a half range. Um, inflation, people forget about, or, or, you know, excess return over inflation, or real returns versus nominal returns. And then the last thing that people don't think a lot about is the opportunity cost. What would you have done with the money had you not made this investment? And, and really the return is the delta between A versus B. So I think at the end of the day, ROI sounds easy. I bought it for X, I sold it for Y. Did I make money or not? But when you get into the, the three T's of transaction cost, time, and taxes, and you also consider opportunity costs and inflation, it can get pretty complex. And I think that's why lots of people think they can, they can invest on their own. And we love people who want to invest on their own. But I think many of us, myself included, realize that at times it's good to have a partner who can help you understand those real costs and, and also help drive those real costs down. All right. So um, when I asked you guys if you have heard about this ROI, eh, nobody really said that you have heard about it. All right. So what did you understand what ROI means? What is it? 
Me, teacher. Okay. Uh, Roy is a writer of his best news. Uh, he, speak, uh, he speaks about the ROI is an uh, advantage for reduce the taxes, time, and inflation. Okay. All right. Very good. Who else? What does ROI mean? What does it mean to you now? Teacher. Yes, Oscar. Teacher. It, it, for me, it wasn't clear what Irene said. I mean, Irene, get, uh, Irene got uh, the... Why the I or I was important in order to determine determine the, the inflation and other stuff or the inflation and in the in the and the other stuff influence the ROI. Right. I mean this guy, the one on the video, he was saying, okay, these factors influence the ROI. All right. And sometimes okay. people don't take that into account. And he was saying we should because it's not just about how much I bought it for, how much I'm going to you need to think about many other factors as taxes, as time, as opportunity cost, and all the other things that he was mentioning. I understand. Sure. It as a, yes, Oscar, continue. I understand it as a ratio uh -huh. uh, between the, the, the amount of, of investment mm -hmm. and uh, divided to the, to the returns. I don't know how to say profit. I believe profit, profit is yes, profit, yes, profit, profit, profit mm -hmm. because it's free of 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 taxes or right. The profit is the, yeah, profit. uh huh, uh huh. The profit divided to the investment, right? So it's a percentage, a percentage, of, uh, yes. like a like a efficiency mm -hmm. of an inversion, right? Of an investment, correct? Right. No, sorry, That's is okay. the is that will be the the efficiency of an investment right but okay. the, although i don't know how the how to measure the the factors that influence that is that uh roi roi all right okay. ROI. ROI. okay thank you oscar let's see uh jesse and then norma i think normita wants to say something i'm talking about oscar say the roi is just to evaluate the efficiency or is an investment or to compare the efficiency of, of several different investments. And so does that mean that, that ROI is, uh, is an instrument that the employees use to, to compare okay. the cost uh, to compare mm -hmm. that cost, and then they have to obtain, obtain more performance inside the mm -hmm. can be. Okay, all right, okay. Yeah. Normita, you were gonna say something? Thank you, Jesse. Yes, teacher, uh, the ROI is a, is a percentage as uh -huh. a company's measure, how they perceive in an key indicators improvement or okay. the money investment in training. Okay. This is one, one, one topic. And the second one is when, for example, yesterday I speak about the in support. Right. Both companies as a uh, um, obligation right. to pay for each employee $1 per month. Right. That money, uh, the, uh, the company always need to pay, mm -hmm. but they don't receive any anywhere if they don't use it then it's a for training. All right. And that that training is a, a measure too as a ROI for the money payment every month. Okay. This is another one. And the third one is when the company have a big issue related any specific topic. For okay. example, ergonomics ergonomics in the country is a mm -hmm. topic that country don't have a, a good teachers or a good um, a investigation center okay for that specific point and mm -hmm. for manufacturing uh, companies that is a big issue because right. it's a related to illnesses mm -hmm. provoked for for bad 
method or for bad action inside the, the plant. Okay. Then imagine the one course for around 12 or 20 people. Mm -hmm. the, the cost is around the $600. Okay. And then uh, in the country, no exists one person with the training to teach in them. Okay. And then the company needs to investment for a mm. foreign job trainer for Spain or uh, Italy or another one and try to that people at the country to teach them. And okay. that is very expensive. But right. the company mm -hmm. made ROI related mm -hmm. to the cost for investment in the trains, trainer versus the illness uh, um, medical leave they need to mm -hmm. pay for the associate. With okay. Uh, illnesses. All right. Okay. And when they compare that numbers is more or, or the, the, the investment the company perceive the return we reduce the illnesses incapacitation or leave, medical leave uh, around one year or two years. Okay. And that is the, the indicator they use it to to sustain for the okay. job manager, invest mm. in a specific uh, training. Okay, all right. Interesting, Normita. Thank you. Thank you for it's that here. information. Yes. For me, ROI, R -O -I, I? Yes. In, in few or in a short words, it's like, it, it could be like a cost benefits. All right, explain. Is, um, it's like a, the, the measure that cost benefits. Come okay. On, maybe the cost of beneficio. The okay. The cost of the invest, of the invest, yes. and the benefit that the company have to do for invest. Okay. Something like that. All right. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else, guys? Yes. Yes, of course. Go ahead. I understand the return on the investment. I say the all the investment have also have invest investment. Okay. And in how much time uh, we recall this cost of the, or this invest? For example, is the enterprise investment or training in your employer in the area salt. Okay. This employee may be in the future in the salt is more productive. In this okay. moment the enterprise record your your investment. Okay. All right. Okay. I see what you're saying. All right, very good. We're gonna go on here guys. Uh, just give me a second here. All right. I'm gonna show you this right here. Oh, uh, hold on. You know what? That's not it. Just give me a second. I don't know where it is. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hold on. Just give me one quick second, guys. I think it's this one. Let me just get it out for you here, guys. So you can. Okay, there you go. All right. This is what I want you to do right now. I'm going to share this. Oh, you know what? But before that, I need to take attendance. Oh, no, I forgot. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Um, Nancy Elizabeth Larin Chavez. Present teacher. All right. Uh, Erika Lirio Perez Diaz. Present. Thank you. Eric Mauricio Paredes Hernandez. Oops, no. All right, uh, Henry Vladimir del Cid Tepas. Thank you. Jose Luis Rivera Gutierrez. Jose Luis. Jose Luis, we see you. No nos escucha. All right, but you're there. Moises Eduardo Alas Roque. Present. Thank you. Oscar Armando Bonilla Flores. Present. Present. Thank you, Jose Luis. Thank you, Oscar. Present teacher. Yes, thank you, Jose Luis. Thank you. Um, 
Cruz Yesenia Maldonado Tejada. Present teacher. Diana Gabriela Hernández Morales. Present. Andrea María Trabarín okay, por... Alfaro. Present. Williams Alexander Rodríguez Aragueta. Hey, where's Williams today? He's not in class. Okay. Um, Francisca Irene Lima Hernández. Present teacher. Guillermo Antonio Amaya Escobar. All right. Uh, Jennifer Carolina Costa Bonilla. Jenny's not in right now, huh? Oh, this is strange. Gerardo Daniel, Goza, uh, Daniel Gomez Rodriguez. Present teacher. Thank you. Norma Araceli Rivera Rivera. Present teacher. Elizabeth del Carmen Salguero Romero. Present teacher. Thank you. Silvia Marisol Villalta Martinez. Present. Verónica Lisset Soto Serna, sorry. Pero <laughs> Thank you, Lisset. Eh, Nubia Raceli Cortez Amaya. Thank you. All right, guys, this is what I, wanna, I want you to do. I'm going to show you this. This is from your manual anyway. It says how to conduct a simple assessment in seven steps. This is like the topic for tonight, okay? I mean, we were already talking about like the topics from the manual, but this is the topic, all right? How to conduct a simple training needs assessment in seven steps. Do me a favor. Can you take a picture of this? You're going to take like several screenshots, okay? Take a picture. Let me know when you finish so I can move it. Can I move? Yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move it. Hold on. There. To number three. All right. One, two, three. How to assess training. Ready? Ready, guys? Can I move it? Yes? Yes. Thank you. All right, take a picture from, whoa, hold on, from here. Okay. And we're gonna take another picture right now. All the way from here, I think. Hasta las seis teníamos. Okay, I want you to like, okay. Um, here, all the way to here, guys. The last one, I promise. This is the last picture you're taking right now. Got it? Yes? Yes. Okay. The rest is not, is not from that. Okay, so this is what I want you to do. I want you to go and read it. I'm going to send you to your groups right now. And I want you to read how to conduct a simple training needs assessment in seven steps. So if I am working with Verito, we're reading Verito, okay? So you read the first paragraph, I read the second paragraph, and then we're reading how to assist training needs, number one, number two, number three, four, five, six, seven, and then these are additional tips about training needs assessment, okay? So I want you to read, please practice reading out loud because that's mm -hmm. another way to practice your English, all right? So I'm gonna send you right now. That's a nice group we have today here. Let's see. There's gonna be one group with three people. The rest are your working in pairs. There you go.
Hi, Silvita. Hi, Silvia. Silvia, can you hear me? Ah, okay. I get it. Thank you, Silvita. <laughs> okay, thank you. Employee has access. <laughs> Hello, teacher. Hi, Dianita. Hi, teacher. Dianita, you're talking to yourself. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you know no, what? The thing is, like, you were supposed to be with Silvita, but Silvia is connected in two devices. Because in one she can see and the other one she can speak. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. so she was explaining that right now. But Williams just got in. All right. So I'm going to send. Okay. To work with you. Ah, okay. So he's coming. He's coming. Okay. Okay. Hi, Williams. Teacher. Hi, Williams. Did just I'm so, I guess I'm at, asking for you. Yes, I come at just now. Okay, yeah, I know, I know. I know. Okay, so you're working with Dianita? Diana, okay. is it possible for you to share the screen or not? Uh, yes, and I'm looking for the uh, for the phone because I had it in my, in my phone. If so not, I'm connecting my phone. Ah, mm -hmm. okay. Ah, okay. So, Williams, what I what we you guys are working on right now, you're reading, okay? So you're reading this um, article about ways to assess trainings. All right. So that's what you're reading today, okay? Okay. Thank you. And you're in good hands because the Anita is good. Yeah. Uh, teacher, I am. Um, I can. I think that I can. Uh, you know what? Uh, sure. I can I share. I can share it. That's okay. okay. Williams, can you can you see my screen? Yes. All right. So um, there, you have to take like four pictures, Williams. Okay, but can you take the or a screenshot, however you want to? Can you take the first one? How to conduct a simple training needs assessment in seven steps. Okay. 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 The next one it's about here. Let's say. Okay. Okay. Ah, okay. Uh, the first one, please. Uh, ah, okay. Working now. All I'm right. so sorry. That's okay. Somewhere. Okay. Okay. It's oh, okay. Okay. The second picture. Hold on. Digamos que ahí. Okay. All right. Then we have this one. That's the, all the way to number four. Okay. Then we have this one ah i start number five six and seven williams i got it okay and the last one i promise is the last one is <laughs> this one mm -hmm. so the idea is for you to be reading with um diana okay okay 
Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, teacher. Thank you. So we're going to read a, par a paragraph, each one. Okay. Okay. Can start. you share it or? Uh, okay. I can. It's only. Mm. I need to open. Okay. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, can I start? Mm. Yes, that is the first one. Yes. Okay. That's the first one. Okay. But you don't have to like the first uh, sentences, but I have it. <laughs> I have them in my phone. So, do you want to quickly learn the training needs of a group of employees who have similar jobs? Yet, you don't want to take the time to develop and implement a survey, put, put the questions in a computer program, or run an analysis of the demographic, demographic information you collect? Okay, this training needs assess assessment and works best in a small to mid-sized organizations. It will give you a quick ass assessment of the training needs of an employee group. In a larger organization, unless you work with subsets of employees, um, the challenge is more dif difficult. You wouldn't, for example, want 15 people in the room identifying their training needs. This training needs assessment assessment helps you find common training programs for a group of employees. How to assess the training needs? One, the facilitator gathers all employees who have the same job in a conference room with a whiteboard or flip charts and markers. Alternatively, uh, if each employee has access, you could use a program like Google Docs or another online shared access service. You will lose some of the immediacies of the more visual whiteboard or flip chart, however. Okay, two. Ask each employee to write to write down their 10 most important training needs. Emphasize that the employees should write specific needs. Communication or team building are such broad training needs as an example, that you will need to do a second training needs assessment on each of these topics. How to give, how to give feedback to, a, to colleagues, how to resolve a conflict or how to deeply and effectively listen to a coworker or more specific training needs. Then, ask each person to list their 10 training needs. As they list the training needs, the facilitator captures the started training needs on the whiteboard or flip chart. Don't write down duplicates, but do confirm by questioning that the training need that on the surface appears to be a duplicate really is an exact duplicate. Otherwise, participants can feel as if their needs were marginalized. When all of the training needs have been listed, use a weighted folding process to, priori to prioritize the training needs of the group. In a weighted folding process, you use sticky dots or numbers written in magic markers, magic markers, not as much fun to vote on and prioritize the list of training needs. 
assign a large dot 25 points and a smaller dots 5 points each. Distribute as many dots as you like, but make sure that every employee has the same number of points. Tell needs assessment participants to place their dots on the chart to vote on their priorities. Give the group a 10 or 15 minute time limit so that you don't have he or she don't have the the they have uh, for the example the what the good ability for teach yes the, yes the good ability for teach and maintain that the person interesting in the topic they didn't in other cell in in one uh, point after uh, says that one uh, take time or schedule another session, another session. in this case the people invest for example the meeting was uh, scheduled for one hour but if you, the trainer of the training uh, as as you said that that time is enough for completed the action and then uh, no, pass the hour and the people don't complete it or not uh, are effective for the time and not finish that the brainstorm correct yes. or only make the brainstorm but not make another step uh, setting in this one is when the people yeah. uh, priori priori prioritizing using the dots I, I participate in one brainstorming with that recommendation. It's very effective it's because yes. when the people make the brainstorm and then the, the trainer says, you have a 20 points, you invest your 20 points and the topic for you are more important. And give us a, a pen, and all that the people go for all the features put in the wall and add the points. And for example, in my case, I always put five points and I only choose five training. Mm -hmm. In this form, I assume I invest correctly in my 25 points. But because when you are, I, I, give a one or two, this point lost because always you take all the, the training with more value as accumulate for all the votes. Okay. And do you do you write the the name of the topic about this uh, about this the, que the question in the underline? What? I don't understand that. I write for ex I, I only write how to conduct a sample. Only that? No. No. Mm. Okay. No, I understand better. What is that? Do doubt. Mm -hmm. When you uh, only make a market, uh, Silvita, Silvia, no, Verito, perdón, Vero. Hello, <laughs> I'm sorry, Verito. Uh, you want, you, you want, want Silvita? Yes, I know. Uh, sorry, you want to know the name of the article? Yes, yes. Ah, uh, it says yes. It says how to conduct a simple. A simple training needs assessment. A simple training needs assessment. Assessment in seven steps. Assessment in seven steps. Okay. Mm -hmm. Teacher, please. Yes. Thank oh, you. Just give me a second, Normita. Ahorita voy, espérame. Uh, uy, espérame. ¿Qué estoy haciendo? Voy a compartir mi pantalla rapidito con ustedes dos. Is this one, Norma? This one. Uh -huh. ah, okay. How to conduct a simple training needs assessment in seven steps. Uh, okay. This. 
the seven step uh, help at the at the train training mm -hmm. right training have, have to for example have to have to make a a, a training right yes and and we are speaking with with norma uh -huh. when the this step needs for example when the the training don't have the ability to maintain the other people interested mm. in the topic right yes mm -hmm. all right yeah it's actually interesting and i think it's really it's not difficult to understand all right because it's like straightforward all right so here like one of the how to assess yeah. training needs the facilitator gathers all employees, all right, who have the same job in a conference room with a whiteboard or flip chart. So these are like telling you how to assess it uh, when you're talking about training needs, all right? Like remember last time I was telling you, do they ask you questions? Do they ask you if you want to receive a training? So one of yeah. the, the ways of doing it is how to assess is asking, you know, gathering all the employees, all right? So that's one of them. All right, so here you have list the training needs in order of importance also. All right, so like, let's say uh, people are more, I don't know, for example, um, Excel trainings, all right, to say something. And then the other one is first aids and the other one is, um, I don't know, health, uh, safety and, and health, for example. So you as the uh, custom services right yeah so you're making a list which one had like more votes you know which one is the most famous one or the most popular training that the the, the people want to receive all right so that's what it it um they mentioned when it says list the training needs all right another one is like number six take time or schedule another session to brainstorm, mm -hmm. brainstorm the needed outcomes or goals from the first three or five training sessions and identify the needs assessment process, all right? So here they are telling you and they are like saying how to deal with this. And then additional tips about training needs assessment. Training needs assessment can be, and often needs to be much more complicated than this, but this is a terrific process for a simple training needs assessment, all right? So this is like, uh, it's uh, this article is actually taken from the book that we're using. All right, so I think it's it's quite interesting to to read it. All right. Okay. Very good. Normita, is it still raining by your house? Yeah, right now I stopped, okay. but uh, since the five thirty o'clock, ah, it was raining in the, in the American part. Mm. The raining soon. 1 p.m. Okay. to the 4 p.m. All and right. the road between the El Congo wow. to Santa Ana was right. raining. Right. Mm -hmm. Normita, how long does it take you to get to American Park? American Park is um, Ciudad And you live in Santa Ana, right? I live in Santa Ana. So how long does it take you to get to your work? Yes, 30 minutes every day when going in the show. Right. One hour. One hour. <laughs> yeah, Normita, very good. Now, is everybody like back at the factory, Normita, or not everybody yet? Uh, for this week, completed the, the requirement for all the people staying house. Because remember, uh, according to the 31 decret, uh -huh. all the people with um, illnesses, specific illness, mm -hmm. can, they cannot to pay back to the company. Right. But uh, according to the rules, from 24 hours, all that person needs to come back. Okay. And for this week, uh, all the supervisors asking for the people if they can go out right. or not. Okay. Wow. I so don't I know what to make that. <laughs> yeah, so I guess <laughs> next so next week everybody's back with everything now? Everything. Wow. 
everything for all the companies. Yeah. In, yes. In the, in the in prison. Right. I think it's going to be much more dangerous now. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I think the, the people with that problem, illness problems, mm -hmm. when they are staying in the house near to four months, mm -hmm. imagine April, May, June, July, and August. Right. And then they have a, a cube in their house. Right. And when when they go out to the company, the viral I don't know what to say the carga viral. Yeah, the whole like the the viral charge. Uh huh. Uh, was very strong. Right. Yes. And and that one uh, can be had a risk. Right. For the the, the people staying in house. Right. Because yeah. They they no no have that experience, and then they need to choose the to teach all the procedure for biosecurity. Right. Yes. And in this period of time, they have a risk. Uh huh. Right. Yes. Yeah, so and far. another another thing, we can control it, how to make the people go to the company in the right. bus. This is a, a, a for me, it's a beer. This I know. So that means next week, public transportation is back. Yes, yes. We are working in, in previous week with the people who make the service transportation mm -hmm. for that uh, previous weeks, right? But it's a business, and the, <laughs> the transportistas don't have a a lot more food. Right. And and we make for that if they continue to uh, give up transportation with the same personnel for each plan, the company assures the people use it that bus. But I don't know if they accept the terminus. Right. Because the term. If they accept the company continues assure the the disinfectation units right. and the transport this, the transport don't have a cost it's okay the company investment that ah, mm -hmm. i get it okay but i don't know if they accept it or not right okay wow then next week is gonna be crazy huh yes but i i am starting in this week i take a, a two no a take Mm -hmm. uh, the cups because uh, we expect to increase cases another week. Right, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Verito, in your office, everybody's going to be back too. Yes, in fact, in my office, all the people back the, the last month. Oh, really? Yes, only the person who have a an illness? An illness is like chronic illness? Oh, oh, yes, a mm. chronic illnesses. They don't. They didn't return. Don't no, they didn't return. But rest of the rest of the co workers mm -hmm. uh, returned the last month. Wow. In my case, I had, I had to take the public transportation. And I re and I feel worried because it will it will be more dangerous. Yes, it is. It is. It increases yeah. the risk. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, uh, the this in this moment the company provides the transportation, but provides. Yeah. I think I think the other week they don't give any more. <laughs> Right, yeah. Now, there is something I don't understand, but I really don't watch the news, Norman. <laughs> and I don't watch, I mean, I don't. So but why did they do this? Why is everything opening next week? What happened to the faces? Yeah, but the, the faces couldn't complete it. 
in the time defined because the the assemb assembly and the court because they uh, declare in not approve that that uh, constitution constitutional mm -hmm. I don't know what to say in English uh, no lo declaró inconstitucional. <laughs> no quieren a un email, no. Ajá. Ok. Ajá. Entonces le quitaron el, el poder al Estado. Entonces ahorita van a abrir y ya no van a respetar las fases. Mm. Pero eso hubiera sido lo mejor. Yes. Wow. Un eh. fan de, de transporte. How, how do you say transportistas in English? Uh, the drivers, I guess, the, the bus drivers or the public drivers. Uh -huh. Yes, but, but the owners, mm -hmm. they say that they want to increase the, mm -hmm. the pay. Yes, yeah. because they say that they have to buy a, a max, a cold oh. hell. Yeah. In the money yes. paternario to mm -hmm. put it uh, in the seat every every road they finish. Uh, I I uh, speak with one there uh, yesterday and he said me uh, all the transportation trans driver transportation uh, are com convoked at the um, in the case of Santa Ana at the INSA district mm. and then receive for the Vice Ministry of Transport, okay. uh, all the steps they need to achieve. Okay. Because uh, I, I understand since the Monday to Friday, every group had an assessment mm -hmm. by BMT. Okay. And they, uh, if the BMT uh, not approve the correct sanitation security, Keep the, the permission. Oh, they are going to take their permission. Uh, and then that bus can, couldn't use it at the, at the next day. Oh, okay. But that process was a big problem for the all the user. Yeah. Imagine you, you go in one bus and the, the this ministry said, no, you couldn't continue and go out all the people and then these people have to transport it. right yeah mm -hmm. it's a chaos it is gonna be a chaos yes oh my goodness mm -hmm. yeah but, oh no but, anyway. but the, at the end the, the people is very affected right of course yeah yeah we are in the yeah. middle of everything <laughs> yeah yeah all right okay girls we're gonna go back and we're gonna discuss about what we read and then i'll tell you what to do on the last activity okay thank you thank you thank you sorry normita thank you <laughs> <laughs> all right guys um i'm sorry it took a while but i was talking with Normita and Vero about some other issues, but it's interesting. All right, guys, so this is, um, I wanted you to read that, the, uh, those, um, the article about assessment and everything, and then I have this for you, so you guys can take a look at it. We're not gonna read it, I mean, we're not gonna go back to the groups right now, we will in a couple of minutes, all right? Training needs assessment activity, all right, so I'm gonna just read it quickly to you. It says the problem, not having meaningful and defined input from volunteers on training topics, content, and formats. This is, I mean, this is a sample, all right? The solution to design and apply needs assessment to query volunteers on training that best suits their needs, all right? Remember that in other countries, uh, volunteering happens a lot, something we don't do really here in El Salvador, not as much as they do in other countries, okay? But what I wanna show you here is this. Um, I just let me see here. See, uh, we talk about here, they have like uh, types of assessment. This is this assessment assignment includes two parts. The first involves asking stakeholders, the organization's decision makers about their knowledge of the audience and its training needs. 
also seek the suggestions on the various formats for staging and needs, all right? And needs assessment. The second part includes filling a questionnaire template with questions for you, for your organization volunteer training audience. They have some steps here, all right? But then what I want to see is this. Uh, this can be a format on having uh, an assessment after a training or before a training, depending. All right, asking the right questions before you write your questions. All right, it's not easy to ask questions of your training audience without first knowing what to ask. Okay, this form encourages you to stop and think about what you know already about your audience. You as a manager, you as an owner, you as a supervisor. You as a leader, you know your people, all right? As well as the different needs assessment approaches that may be available to you. Interviews, observations, focus groups, and questionnaires, all right? Uh, it helps you focus on the purpose of the training and gives you a sense of what to ask when you formally query your audience. Consider collaborating with your supervisors, site mentor, or others on your organization staff to complete the form. So here we have a sample of questions. For example, you can ask, uh, depending on the training, of course, but you can say, who are the learners? What do we think they know already? All right, so this is like questions for you. You the, you want to send your, your workforce to training. So you say, okay, who are the learners? Who are gonna be the ones that I'm gonna be sending to? What do you think they already know? All right, that's something that you should ask yourself, okay? What do we want them to know? Why are you sending them to that uh, training, all right? What do we think they want to know? See, you see the difference between what do I think they know, what do I want them to know, and what do you think they want to know? So the very different questions, all right? What learning is most essential? How will we decide? What is the cause of the training need? Will training help? What might will learners do with this training? Are there problems for training? What data do we already um, have about our training audience? Past training evaluations, volunteer feedback, questionnaires. What type of training environment fits the subject matter? Workshops, coursework, in the field training or on the job training, etc. All right. So these are like questions that you would like to ask yourself before sending them to the trainings, all right? So I think that's interesting because sometimes we don't ask ourselves. For example, if I am the manager, I just feel that uh, you guys need to go and to take this training. But I don't ask myself, okay, who am I sending? Am I sending all of my students? Some of my students, all right? Uh, what do I think they already know, all right? So those questions are very, very important. I'm going to stop right now because I need to take attendance so I can leave you out with this for uh, the last minutes of a class, all right? So I'm taking attendance. Nancy Elizabeth Larin Chavez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Eric uh, Alirio Perez Diaz. Present. Thank you. Eric Mauricio Paredes Hernandez. Henry Vladimir del Citepas. Henrito. Jose Luis Rivera Gutierrez. Present. Thank you. Um, Moises Eduardo Alas Roque. Present. Oscar Armando Bonilla Flores. Present teacher. Cruz Yesenia Maldonado eh, Tejada. Present teacher. Cruz, uh, sorry, Diana Gabriela Hernández Morales. Present. Andrea María Trabanino Alfaro. Present. Williams Alexander Rodríguez Argueta. Present. All right, very good. Francisca Irene Lima. Hernández. Present. Guillermo Antonio Amaya Escobar. No, right. Eh, Jennifer Aco Carolina Acosta Bonilla. Gerardo Daniel Gómez Rodríguez. Present. Norma Araceli Rivera Rivera. Present. Elizabeth del Carmen. Salguero. Present. Silvia Marisol. Present. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Silvia Marisol Villalta Martínez. Present. 
Verónica Lizette Soto Serna. Present. I Nubia Araceli Cortez Amaya. Present. All right, very good. So what I want us to do is, hold on, just let me just, um, here, okay, so these questions, these questions, they want you guys to ask yourself, all right? Pretend that you are the manager or the supervisor or the human resource guy or girl that is in charge of sending your people to the workshop, all right? Now, they say that uh, I put like potential formats that you guys can use after the training is this, interviews, observations, site visits, focus groups or questionnaires, all right? And then you have to ask yourself, by whom? Who's gonna be doing the interviews? Who's gonna be doing the observations? Who's going to be working on the focus groups? Who's gonna be asking the questionnaires, all right? So that's also important for you to ask, all right? Who's doing this, all right? Then you have here, this is a sample a already filled in, all right? So who are the learners? Mentors and tutors, mostly undergrads with the desire to become teachers, for example, all right? Now, I'm not, gonna, uh, I'm not gonna show you the answers because I want you, for the last minutes of, it, of the class, I want you to take a picture of these questions. Can you take a picture of these questions right now? And I want you guys in your groups to think, okay, so we are the ones in charge of sending the rest of the employees to a training. And I want you to answer those questions, all right? And think of a type of training, think of what they, uh, you can relate, for example, you can say in the case of all of us work, okay? So you can talk to your partner uh, and say, okay, in my job, I think the people that would need to go to a training are this. And I, what, I, what I think they know is they know about accounting, all right? And then Norma says, okay, but in my company, uh, I think all the seamstresses should go to a training. And I think they already know how to, to sew, all right? But I think they would need, so the idea is to discuss uh, my, my job with your job and answer these questions together. Do you understand what you're going working on? Yeah, based on your experience, based on your job, fill this in, all right? You don't really have okay. to write it, but yes, you talk about it because all of you guys work in different places except for Jose Luis and Henry, but they are not in the same group right now. Okay, so here we go. Did you take a picture of it? Yes? Yes, okay. we, I <laughs> did, I did. Okay, thank you.
Hi, Jose Luis. Hi, Jose Luis. Hello, teacher. What happened? <laughs> My connection is bad. <laughs> it's raining? No, it's, uh, how do you say? It's, it's a little bit, but uh -huh. it's overflow. Right, okay. Do you remember who you were working with? Yes, I work with uh, Andrea and Henry. Ah, okay, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you right now with them, okay? Andrea and Henry. Okay. Thank you. It's just one group with three persons. Yeah, your group. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. We talk about teachers. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What are the learners? Maybe teachers, like just for example. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. What do they know already? Uh, they, they know they are teachers, but in general. <laughs> so they, have, they know how to teach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> what do we want to know, them to know? <laughs> uh huh. What do we want that? What do we want them to know? Uh, but you know what? Sorry, new... sorry, Oscarito, Oscarito and Silvia. Okay. Maybe, for example, if you're talking about teachers, then you're pretending to be, let's say, principals of the school. All right. So who are the learners? Then you can decide if they are preschool teachers, a, um, elementary teachers, junior high teachers, special needs teachers. All right. So you have all kinds of teachers. Mm -hmm. you see okay, us? okay. See, yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. Okay. So, you can they, decide on any, uh, on any of those type of teachers. We have to be more specific on what kind of sure. teacher and then what kind of, what we want them to know. Or yeah, to, or to what, do you, what do they know? What do they know already? All right, okay. So they know how to deal with children. They know how to teach their classes and everything. Mm -hmm. But what do they want? What do you want them to know? All right, so maybe mm -hmm. you can think like, remember the other day you were talking with Jenny, um, Oscar, you can say, oh, maybe I want all my, my school teachers to know about a, a special uh -huh. needs in general, all right? Because I think it's, it's, it's important. Or maybe I want my teachers to know about first aids. Uh, what about if a kid get, chokes himself? Uh -huh. All right, so like that. Oh, okay. The mm -hmm. teachers, the mm -hmm. teachers have to know about, uh, how do you say, layers? About laws, laws. yeah, laws. about law. Uh -huh. About law, because they work with, with uh, minor, minor minors. Minors, yes. Minors. minors. Yes. Okay, la, uh, they have to know about the Lepina. La ley de okay. la carrera docente, oh, la ley de educación. So. Very good, okay, Silvita. To... Ya ves, Silvita. <laughs> <laughs> no, como trabajo yeah, en yeah. eso. Ya leí en el acuerdo. Claro, sí. No. Silvita, ¿usted vive aquí en San Salvador? Yes. No. Ok. Yes. Ok. Yeah, okay. Very... Entonces, they need to, uh, in many, many laws, the teachers that are teaching uh, content, content, they need to know about uh, about the tribute, y la ley del IVA, lo que enseña okay, en contaduría. The taxes, uh -huh, the tax. the taxes, tax law, the, tax law, uh -huh. in many laws. Really, <laughs> very, very hard to, to read. Yeah. The constitution, wow. the, the teacher that, uh, that need to teach uh, sociales, uh -huh. they need to know the constitution. Okay. But by now, I, I think it's they, we want them to know the Lepina law. Yeah, I think that one is nice because, yeah. Uh -huh. That's very, very important. I mean, all of them are, but I think Lepina teachers, especially if they deal with children and teenagers, they have to know that law. Okay. Yes. What? Well. 
So they are elementary teachers? No. What do you think? All the teachers. The whole okay. teachers? Okay. All the teachers. Okay. Yeah, I think it's important for all the teachers in a school. It doesn't matter the level, they should know about the Lepina, for example. Uh -huh, okay. They should, they should. They should, uh -huh. for sure. Okay. The whole teachers. And we want them to know the Lepina law. What learnings, let me see. What learning is most essential? How will we decide? Mm -hmm. What learning is Teacher, this? in this case, we are talking about uh, the same topic, the Leile Pina, or, or we change the topic? What learning, for that one, what learning is most essential? Uh huh, I didn't in, get it. I didn't in, get it. In this case, for example, you just did it because you were deciding. I mean, Silvita was mentioning many laws, all right, like Leile Pina, the Constitution, the all of like many laws that she mentioned all right but what is the most essential for you right now maybe the, the lepina how will you how will you decide because teachers deal with children all right mm -hmm. so i think it's mandatory for all the teachers to know how to deal with children based on the lepina law mm -hmm. all right so in this okay. case what okay. learning is most essential lepina out of the other yeah, laws okay. that Silvita was mentioning, right? Oops. Okay, I, I understood now. I got it now. Thank you. Yeah. Uh huh. So what, what, what cause, my? Uh huh. What is the cause of the training needs? Okay, the cause is that the, we have a, a new law for uh, for children treatment, okay. or how to deal with children. Right. We have a new law. Maybe relative. We have to uh, enforce it. I mean, to to ap apply it or enforce it. I don't know. Both. <laughs> Both. Uh -huh. Apply it, enforce it, and and, and to know it. Uh huh. Know it well. Maybe also. No. Uh, uh, you see, Oscarito, he was wearing a mask, and you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I'm just worried about Oscar. He's there and oh. he's not wearing a mask. Come on, Oscar. Uh, so some people is leaving and uh, and they are relieved. Ah. We, at night at the night shift, they don't. We are going to be only two. So you're staying all night. All night, but only two in during the day. Five uh, five controllers. Okay. Are needed in the tower. Okay. So at nine, uh, only two controllers are left. Oh, okay. So it's you uh -huh. and another person. Uh huh. Cool. Uh, until six you, in the morning. You don't have problems that is that you are in class. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question, Silvita. <laughs> uh -huh. No, oh, I think okay. that that in in this moment is not a problem because the the traffic or the airplane is mm -hmm. uh is a low. Yeah, it's it's, it's low. Yeah. We, uh, we have few few flights. flights. Uh huh. Flights. Uh, maybe we are we are having the twenty five percent of the of the year. I mean every day. Right. We had decreased uh by by 25 percent so we uh, and actually the other way uh, uh, how to say we are allowed to to take this class because ah. uh, the company uh, told us to, or asked us to to take it ah okay there, there you go silvita we got the answer we, uh -huh. <laughs> okay if very good wanted, of course if you wanted the company offered the the chance uh -huh. to to get in these classes if and if you want you you are uh, you are uh, assigned to, to oh okay cool uh-huh the human resources department uh, uh make the the management i mean the 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 paperwork in order mm. to to start these classes cool all so, right so we have permission to, to uh, leave, but, yeah because if Vita and i were like worried because he's like okay <laughs> 
still, still do, still do. We have uh, some issues to to. At the same time, I'm right. watching some things right now, but it's okay. We have no. no I am now. worried because uh, I I was uh, tell to Oscar. Uh huh. Uh, I I watch a program if airplanes crash oh down. <laughs> I was thinking. Oh, oh no. my God! <laughs> she is studying and working. What is? Yeah, it? I get it. It's going to be a problem with the. <laughs> no, I'm not handling. No, I'm not handling any any okay. traffic. All right. There's no actually. No. There's no flights right now. Right. Okay. Safer. I was telling her that it's safer. Sorry, it's I was safer than driving a car. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. All right, very good. Okay, guys, we're gonna go back. I know we're not we were not able to finish, but that's okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good night. Thank you, Oscar. <laughs> thank you, Sylvia. All right, guys, it's pretty much time to go. I know, I know, Williams. We need to go. <laughs> we like. All right. So tomorrow, when we begin the class, it just like if you were able to discuss with your partners about those questions. Keep it close to you because tomorrow, as soon as we get in, we're going to share. Right now, for example, I was talking to Oscar and Sylvia, and they decided that they, uh, they came up with the idea of teachers, all right? And they decided, okay, so who are going to be the, the ones going? All the teachers from a school. What do, you want, what do they want them to know? They want them to know about like, the Lepina law, all right? So that's like, you know, among other ones, they decided that Lepina law is very important, all right? So based on that, we're going to be talking about it tomorrow. If not able to finish, don't worry about it. We're going to keep on talking about it tomorrow, okay? Thank you so much again, guys, for being with me. I'll see you tomorrow. Please keep Thank safe. Thank you, teacher. Bye, teacher. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Good night, teacher. Bye. God bless you all time. Bless you too, Jesse. Bye. God bless you. Can we have a day three, 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 three